Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. The Lenovo Legion Go is finally here and in this video we're going to be taking a look at some gameplay. We're going to be running some benchmarks and just talking about the overall unit. If you're interested in checking out my first look video, I'll leave a link for that in the description. We went over quite a lot in that. I might recap some of that stuff in this video, but I've had about a week to spend with the Legion Go and I'm really enjoying this new handheld gaming PC from Lenovo. So if you're not familiar with the Legion Go, basically what we have here is a big screen handheld gaming PC slash console. This thing is awesome. It's got an 8.8 inch IPS display at 144 hertz, and it's powered by the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme APU with RDNA 3 graphics. Out of the box, this is running Windows, but Lenovo has added Legion space. And by the way, at the time of making this video, I'm on version 1.0.2.0. So if you take a look here, you can see we've got a nice little interface here where we can kind of curate all of our games. They do have a game store built in here. You don't have to buy from here. You can install basically anything you want. After all, it is a Windows PC. And Legion Space is here to kind of just make everything really easy to access, including performance modes. I just went ahead and plugged in my game capture device so we could get a better look at everything. And from within Legion Space, we're going to head to Settings, Performance, Thermal Mode. We've got a few modes that we can mess with here. Quiet, Balanced, Performance, Custom. What I've noticed so far is Quiet is around 10 watts, Balanced is 15, Performance will jump up to 30 watts in some cases and then come right back down to around 20, and we've also got Custom here. We can adjust the TDP from 5 watts up to 30 watts, but 30 watts is definitely going to give us some really great performance. But with all of the gaming we're going to take a look at in this video, I'm in Performance mode, so I'm not using that Custom. We've also got our OS power mode set to performance. We can set the fan up to go full speed. And yeah, I mean, this does put out some air, puts out a little bit of noise. But, you know, without that enabled, it's actually a really quiet and cool system. Actually, pretty impressed with the thermals here. Now, obviously, Legion Space has a lot more built in, and this really allows us to kind of customize everything on the Legion Go. And by the way, from general settings, you can easily check which version of Legion Space you're running back up here and uh, one of the things that I really wanted to show you guys were some benchmarks because this is actually putting out some really great performance. But before we get into that, I do want to give you a quick rundown on the specs one more time. They're very similar to some of the other devices on the market right now, but we are working with a little more here given the RAM speed, screen size, refresh rate, and everything like that. For that APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. These cores are based on Zen 4. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3 GHz, and a boost up to 5.1. Built-in Radeon RDNA 3 iGPU with 12 CUs, 16 GB of LP DDR5X running at 7500 megatransfers per second. Right now, they are offering two different storage variants of the Go. You can pick this up with either a 512 GB M.2 or a 1 TB, but both of them are using a PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD, micro SD card slot that supports up to a 2 TB card, a 144 Hz 8.8 inch 16 by 10 Lenovo Pure Sight QHD Plus display. It's got a resolution of 2560 by 1600, 97% DCI-P3, up to 500 nits of brightness. Wi-Fi 6E 2x2, Bluetooth 5.2, a 49.2 watt hour battery, and this is running Windows 11 Home right out of the box. Next thing we're going to be taking a look at are some benchmarks that I ran on this device. And keep in mind, we are in performance mode. I didn't take up a custom TDP or anything. And the first one here is Geekbench 6. Single core, 2,148. Multi, 10,565. So yeah, I mean, we're definitely putting out some great single and multi-core performance. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks using 3D Mark. Night Raid, 27,826. I also ran Firestrike, which netted us a 7,590. And finally, Time Spy with a 3,346. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I test a lot of APUs. This is one of the highest scores that I've seen out of an iGPU so far, and it's really coming down to this thing having that 7,500 megatransfers per second RAM. A lot faster than some of the other handhelds on the market with this same chip. But of course, these are synthetic benchmarks, and now I want to show you how this thing performs with real-world gaming. And the first one here is my favorite racing game, one that I always test, Forza Horizon 5. 1200p, medium settings, no resolution scale, we got an average of 91 FPS with this game at medium settings. 
Now, I do believe that if we took this down to 800p, we could run this at 120 hertz. We may need to take some of those mediums down to low, but this display would definitely handle it, being that it maxes out at 144. But I mean, either way you look at it, this is running on an iGPU, integrated graphics, and this is some outstanding performance. Next one here is Spider-Man Miles Morales, and this game is always hit or miss on these iGPUs. Right now, we're at 800p low settings, but we're seeing some great performance. I mean, we're over 60, and usually I do like locking this down at 60 FPS. I've got VSync on here, and the screen goes up to 144. We're not going to hit 144 with this, but we did have an average of 74 FPS. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart 800p low settings. We got an average of 72 FPS. This is looking really good, and you know, we definitely tested this on a lot of other handhelds. This is some of the best performance we've seen so far. And with all of these games, I personally like doing 60 or over, even though we're on a handheld. Keep in mind, I mean, we could up the resolution, set this at 30 FPS, and play it all day at medium settings. I also wanted to throw one fighting game in here, so I went with Mortal Kombat 1. With this, we are at 1200p low settings, but I do have FSR set to performance here. So it's FSR 2.2, and it really helps out. Otherwise, you definitely have to take this down to 800p. But when it comes to fighting games on this iGPU, you should have a really good time with it. Street Fighter 6 also runs at full speed. You want to do some Injustice 2, not a problem. I also wanted to test out Red Dead 2, so I just used the built-in benchmark. We're at 800p, low settings, and I do have power plugged in just to show you that that TDP does go up a little bit. You can see we're at 32, and you know, the benchmark's been running for a little while. When I started it up, it was sitting there at 35, but we're seeing some great performance. We actually netted an average of 81 FPS with Red Dead 2 on an iGPU. So one of the standout features of the new Legion Go are the detachable controllers and what they're calling FPS mode. We've got these little lock mechanisms around back. Just put a little pressure on them. We're going to pull them off. Now these are automatically going to reconnect to the Legion Go. And we can use them wirelessly just like this if we want to. But taking a look at the right hand controller, we've got a scroll wheel right here. We've got a few extra buttons, M1, M2. And on the bottom, you'll see we've got a little optical sensor with a switch. We're going to put this in FPS mode. We'll grab the FPS dock. By the way, this magnetically attaches to the controller. And now we can use the right hand joystick or the right hand controller as a mouse. It's got that built in scroll wheel. We've got that M1 and M2 button. So mouse one, mouse two, left click, right click, whatever you want to call it. And while this is setting up on the desk with the built in stand, it makes it really easy to play your favorite first person shooter games. And of course, we had to test out FPS mode. So I went with Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1200p low settings. FSR is set to performance. We can get an average of around 78 FPS, which has fallen right in line with some of the other handhelds on the market with a very similar chip. But FPS mode is actually really fun. When Lenovo first announced this and we saw FPS mode, I thought, yeah, that's cool. I might not use it much. But after messing around with this for about a week, I've actually fallen in love with FPS mode. A lot of fun, and it's even more fun when you have this connected to a big screen, but I wanted to show you everything running on this built-in 8.8 inch display. I haven't adjusted any of the settings at all. Maybe turning up the sensitivity would help out for some people, but yeah, this is really cool. I also wanted to give you an idea of what kind of battery life we can get out of the Legion Go, so I did some testing here, and uh, in Afterburner, you can see that our CPU package power is 20 watts, but that's not the total story. Because right underneath there, we've actually got total system power draw from the battery. Since we know the exact size of the battery in the Legion Go, we can do some simple math here at all of these power profiles and get an idea of what kind of battery life we're going to get out of this. The Legion Go has a 49.2 watt hour battery. With all of my testing, I did have the screen brightness at 100%. In quiet mode, total battery draw is around 14.6 watts. That should net us around 203 minutes. Balanced mode, Battery draw is 24.5 watts, around 120 minutes. In performance mode, it jumps up to 30.2, around 97 minutes. And a custom base 30 watts across the board, 38.3 watts, around 75 minutes. Keep in mind, this is just an estimated battery life given what we know. 
All it takes is a little bit of math. We know the size of the battery and total system draw from the battery at these different performance levels. So yeah, overall, I think the new Lenovo Legion Go is a solid handheld. Love the fact that we've got this trackpad over here and it does have some haptics built in. Really easy to navigate windows. But again, Lenovo gave us Legion space. And you know, if you just wanted to game on this, all you need to really do is stay in Legion space, go to your games, come right back here. The AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme is a great performer. We do have a lot of customizability here when it comes to TDP, different performance profiles that we can choose from. And of course, in a future video, we're gonna see how far we can really take this device, but I wanted to give you a look at it in its stock form factor. And the way it comes set up out of the box, putting it in performance mode really does turn this into an awesome gaming machine. And I'm sure as more people get their hands on these and give Lenovo some feedback, we'll see more features in Legion space. But this is a really nice handheld, and I think Lenovo has done a bang up job. Now, I will have a couple more videos coming. We definitely want to test an eGPU using one of those USB 4 ports. Let me know in the comments below what GPU you'd like to see paired up with this. I mean, we could go up to the RTX 4090 if you want, or we could take it easy with something a little lower end. I'll also have a full emulation showcase video coming up soon. And if there's anything else you want to see tested on this, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more or maybe picking up the new Lenovo Legion Go, I'll leave some links in the description. You can head over to Lenovo's website or Best Buy. Both of those will be down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.